Hear the stories behind the most interesting tech, told by the people who created it. And keep watching for a chance to win a bundle of Sony hardware. Intelligent Textiles was formed purely by accident. <laughs> we had a bit of a eureka moment. Um, Dr. Stan Swallow and myself were both working at Brunel University and we were trying to create a voice communicator for somebody with cerebral palsy. So instead of having a big hard block in front of you, what we wanted to do was make something that was body worn that they could reach and they could access. And purely by dint of Stan knowing about electronics and me being a knitter and weaver, um, we figured out a way that we could weave a tiny mechanical switch into the surface of the fabric. Um, and it simply was a piece of fabric using conductive yarns in warp and weft. And that's how we came up with the idea. The way that we weave our fabric is we weave in warp and weft. So we've got um, horizontal lines and vertical lines and we, and we duck and dive our, our conductive yarns wherever we want them to, to be able to build up this passive electronic circuit. So this one here is a piece of uh, power conducting fabric. Um, and if we put the battery pack on one side, we've got the light on the other, and it, what it's doing, it's taking power along the conductive warps and wefts um, to the light to where it needs the power. And this one's quite interesting because it doesn't matter if it gets cut, damaged or torn, you can still make it, make it work. So we were approached by Canadian military originally because they were working on these things called soldier systems. It's all the computers and GPS and batteries and radios that soldiers tend to carry these days. But they realised they'd have a problem with just the amount of cabling they'd have connecting all of this. And soldiers hate cables because they snag on things, they're, they're always the first thing to break. Canada thought that there was a solution in using some of these e-textiles. So you could make that cabling, that infrastructure, disappear into the uniform and the load carriage, the, 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 the bulletproof vests that they wear. It's USB 2 format, so they can plug anything that's USB 2, but they'll have their radio, they'll have a, uh, a, an interface device, such as we're using a, a phone device at the moment to be able to control the system. We've got lights, we've got... Um, radios, we've got batteries. The interesting thing about the battery is that um, you can plug on lots of different batteries and it'll harvest and scavenge to one battery. Um, so it's all the different pieces of a kit that the, the soldier might want to use. He can plug and play on his device. At the moment it's seven different kinds of batteries that they carry. We're reducing that to one um, and it's lasting for 72 two hours, which is what his mission should be. Um, so we're, we're radically uh, getting rid of all his snag hazards and, his, and the, the extra weight that he's got to carry, but also the cognitive burden as well of him having to constantly check whether his batteries need changing out or not, or, or where what state of charge everything's at. In the last 10 years or so, it's very much become the case that consumer technology is, is driving what soldiers are taking up. So for instance, military radios are nowhere near as capable as your mobile phone might be. Um, and it's only in the last few years that they've started issuing soldiers with cell phones um, in order that they might start using some of those technologies. So it's, it's an interesting point to ask what might come back the other way now from defence technology. Certainly they look to fund technologies that they, that they wouldn't have that wouldn't have the drive to be developed for the consumer world. Um, so things like the augmented reality kit that they're using, the stuff that um, combat pilots use to look through the metal of their cockpits and see what's happening outside of the plane. That's a kind of real cutting edge piece of technology that's been, that's been fettled, that's, that, that's been um, matured for a defence application, but those kinds of technologies will certainly find their way into um, consumer applications, I think. Cell phones already are pretty much disposable. We renew them on a yearly basis. It's about the same lifespan as you would have for a season's new coat or skirt or, or pair of jeans. Um, there's an interesting thing happening in, in fashion and textiles called the slow fashion movement, where the idea is, can we make more of these um, kind of robust, long-lasting, fashion-free kind of items? Um, it's, it's maybe more interesting to think how would we make slow technology in the same way? Can we produce a piece of tech now that would still be relevant and still be useful in 5, 10, 15 years time? And you wouldn't necessarily have been forced to upgrade the thing, like a favourite pair of, of shoes or a favourite coat that you've had for years and years and years. 
one of the problems we've got with our technology is that it does truly disappear. Um, and it's very difficult to sell sometimes because you're trying to sell something that, that, that you can't really feel or can't really see um, when it's embedded in a garment. So I think you'll probably still be wearing jeans, probably still be wearing trainers because that's what we all like to wear and it's extremely comfortable. Um, but maybe you'll have a, an integrated power solution that you can charge your mobile phone or, um, or maybe just speak in your watch. Um, but I think you'll look very much as you are today, only with added functionality. I like the old Douglas Adams quote um, that technology is what we call stuff that doesn't work properly yet. And one of the really interesting things about wearable tech is that it's, it's all about becoming invisible. It's about the fact that when it works so seamlessly with what we're doing in our everyday lives, it starts to disappear and we stop having to think about it. So maybe just building it into textiles, building it into garments is an inevitable part of technology maturing and stopping being technology, but just becoming the tools that we take for granted in our lives. You look at your watch all the time, so why not make it work harder for you? Sony's Smartwatch 3 and Smartband Talk both pair with a smartphone to help you run your life, stay fit, keep in touch, and so much more. It's like an always-on personal assistant. Use the Smartwatch 3 to search and send messages, never miss another notification, keep track of appointments, and even log your movements and fitness. And there are loads of different wrist strap styles to choose from as well. Your wrist will never be the same again. Oh, 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 oh,